the first God I remember was a Santa Claus God who you only turned to around Christmas time, who you tried to butter up and then got mad at if you didn't get what you wanted. It didn't make sense. I knew if there was a God, he could see through us, like we were made out of cellophane, like he could stare directly into our hearts the way we look into an aquarium, like he'd know what was floating around in there, like he might be the one feeding it. Then there were those people who used God to threaten you, saying, you better be careful, God's watching, <laughs> like God was a badass hillbilly <laughs> sitting in some cloud with a pair of binoculars, a cotton candy beard, a six-pack, and a shotgun. And then I saw people who had Jesus' name on their bumper sticker, like he was running for president. <laughs> and sometimes those people with Jesus on their bumper sticker would cut you off on the freeway <laughs> and give you the finger, <laughs> which is very different from lending you a hand. <laughs> and then there were people on television dressed in weird clothes and scary makeup swearing they had the secret to God, like, like God was a keyhole, and their eyeball was pressed to it, and if I just gave them some money, they would let me look. And then I could see God just hanging around in his boxer shorts. And Though I liked the idea of spying on God, I began to wonder if the world would be a healthier place if the Romans had just tolerated Jesus and let him die of old age. <laughs> and then there were the football players kneeling down in front of everybody, thanking God like he was their best friend. <laughs> but then they would jump up and spike the ball and yell, I'm number one. <laughs> and I'd be confused, because if you're number one, then what number is God? <laughs> and then I saw politicians trotting God out on a leash like a racehorse. They wanted to hop on and ride to the finish line. but. But if they lost, then it would be God's fault, and then God would be the donkey they'd pin all their problems on. And that was very nice of God, to be both a racehorse and a donkey. <laughs> and then there were those who said, you better be good on earth if you want to get into heaven, like, like heaven was the United States, and earth was Mexico, <laughs> and the angels were border patrol. Like when you die, you sit in a parked car on the outskirts of heaven, the engine idling, your soul in the back seat in one of those kennels used to carry small dogs on airplanes as you listen on the radio to all the people you ever wronged testify against you. And then there was the church, which was like this cafeteria where they serve God to you, but on these very ungodlike plates. And I just wanted my God pure, you know, not watered down by human beings. So I had one of those catastrophe cards, you know, the one you only turn to in an emergency. Like God is the National Guard you call in to clean up the earthquake of your life. So I got drunk one night, drove home, passed out behind the wheel, and woke going 60 straight at a brick wall. Slammed the brakes, heart banging like a wrecking ball in my chest staring at death's face in the bricks, close enough to see that we had the same cheekbones. And now I have a God who's like a mechanic who can fix anything. So when I want to chew somebody's head off like a saltwater taffy, or amputate my DNA, or open my wrists like windows that have been painted shut, I just put my soul into a box like a busted computer and haul it in. And he never asks to see my paperwork or says my warranty has expired. And I walk out feeling better. And I don't care if he doesn't exist. Woo, yeah.